Oi, oi, all right, all right, how's it going? I'm Grant, you're you. This is the Doodle Review coming through with a new album to give a spin, chat some fraff about, and the sign, pretty arbitrary, score to. Um, today, we're talking about an album that some of you might not have heard yet, and a few of you may not have even realised has been released. Uh, the new record from Jack White. And that's not me trying to be pretentious. This record for the purposes of, of this review, we're gonna call it No Name. The record was very quietly released secretly on Saturday, 20th of July via White's Third Man Record Stores. If you were lucky enough to either to have kind of just gone in there randomly that day, or perhaps you'd been picking up some of the teasers and clues on social media and went in on purpose, after you made a purchase, the staff would have, you would have found the staff had slipped in an extra vinyl into your bag and that vinyl, in a plain white sleeve with no name printed on blue lettering on the disc's inner label, houses in its grooves the latest Jack White solo album. Now his fifth in what's turning out to be a great catalogue. Now I wasn't fortunate enough to snag myself a copy. I had no idea any of this was going on until after the fact where I saw a bunch of people uh, over on the subreddit dedicated to the Detroit guitarist talking about it. So how have I heard it? Well. When Third Man eventually copped to releasing the album on social, they gave the lucky owners some instructions, which is basically rip it and share it with as many people as possible. So with the file sharing sanctioned by the label themselves, uh, at this point you can find a rip of the vinyl either on YouTube or there's a Google Drive link knocking about on that old uh, subreddit as well. Um, so go check it out. Um, and this album is already pretty cool, right? Just on the basis of its release strategy. Uh, while the record does get a little bit old man yells at cloud at certain points on the topic of the modern world, you can't say that this release hasn't been one of the most exciting because of the old school pre-internet mystique around it and all the things that we don't know about it. The second reason No Name is really cool is that it's an absolute garage rock barn burner probably the rawest most aggressive simplistic album jack white has put his name to since the white stripes days i'd wager uh, to me this throwback feels even more gratifying placed in the context of the jack white solo catalog that has come before tracing the catalog to my mind presents pretty much a masterclass in how to take your listeners your fans on a journey into new sonic territories and styles while never fully alienating that core audience 2012's Blunderbuss kicked off White's solo career with a familiar flavour of garage and blues rock while introducing just a touch more of those old timey honky tonk aesthetics that he'd always been fond of. Lazaretto delivered a record with a spine of familiar bangers in the track list it's, uh, like Lazaretto itself, Would You Fight For My Love and Black Bat Licorice, while the rest of the album kind of forked off between some of the weirder blues experimentation and a little more of that honky tonk country flavour. Boarding House Reach in 2018 took a Willy Wonka-like experimental approach to riffs, sampling, instrumentation and arrangement to produce some of the weirdest Jack White music we'd heard so far. This was probably the most divisive record um, in the catalogue and it represents probably a peak of this arc away from the core sound. As a fan though, I felt like enough seeds had been sown over those first couple of albums to prepare me for this jump into the unknown with Boarding House, and it still had enough amazing guitar riffs to get the heart rate going enough such that it didn't feel just like a chin-stroking intellectual exercise. Fear of the Dawn harnessed the weirdness to provide fans with a solid rock album that still dabbled in the avant-garde, but with much more focus on traditional song structures and a return of vocal hooks. And almost in parallel, we got Entering Heaven Alive, a record that applied the same lessons from the experimentation, but towards a more folk and country leaning sound. So once you've been on that journey as a fan, I think the back to basics approach of No Name is satisfying, not just because it's a taste of that Jack White sound that originally turned so many of us on, but because it still somehow feels like progression over the course of the discography we've seen jack take this maximalist approach you know adding more and more new sounds new layers new instruments new arrangements new experiments no name feels like the answer to the question of how do we retain the soul of everything that we've gained over the last decade while removing just as many components as possible uh, trying to strip it back be minimalist 
I think No Name answers that question and happens to be an absolute blast of a record to listen to at the very same time. My favourite part of Jack White as a guitar player has always been his attack. He has this stiff arm, st- like tightness. It sounds like plucking a chicken, to quote another well-regarded guitar player. Being an overall heavier rock record, this is on display throughout, making it a delight to listen to on that level, leaving me with that screwed up face usually reserved for the heaviest of bass lines. And I'm thinking of, you know, track A2 with its bar chords going up and down the neck, the ferocious punk of A6, and on track B1 where that attack really emphasizes the space in between chord strikes that gives the whole tune its power. And the drums on this thing are fantastic as well. Initially, I wondered whether it was White himself behind the kit or most recent rhythmic collaborator, Daru Jones. Based on White's playing in the dead weather, um, I actually think they have quite a similar impressionistic style. They're both really able to riff on a tune almost as much as a guitar would. However, there's a break into a shuffle during the bridge of the first track, which tipped me that it's probably Jones. Even though White has a similar ability to riff, Jones, I think, has a much more solid tempo, which would support a part like that. And this suspicion was confirmed by Jones himself, who subtly copped to his involvement in the record by posting a picture of the vinyl on his page. And the vinyl aspect of of this whole release is also really cool. For a short time at least, who knows how long, our understanding of the album is limited to what's been given to us, which is the title or anti-title, no name, and that's it. You don't have any track names, liner notes, lyrics, or even artwork to influence your feelings on the release. And it also puts greater emphasis on the sequencing of the album. You know, aside from just tracks one to 13, the only other scrap of information is whether the song is on the A or the B side. And as a result, I found myself paying more attention than I otherwise would to the significance of the cuts that start and end each side. Something that I find myself overlooking with most albums, you know, even though I'm myself, I'm a big record collector, I do generally stream music a lot more just for convenience. And it's nice to be forced to pay attention to these details, even in this case, when I have actually loaded the track files onto my phone. Despite how much of a blast I've had with this album, uh, I do have a few minor hang-ups. As I alluded to before, there's a couple of lyrical moments that just give me a touch of the cringe, whether it's the bitterness of A7, where the grouchy, what's become of this world lyricism feels a little forced into the chorus melody, or in B5, where some horniness comes to the forefront that's a bit near. Um, The blistering overdrive of the guitars is incredibly satisfying, but also, and I felt this way a little bit about Fear of the Dawn, very occasionally just a touch fatiguing on the ear. Um, But my suspicion is that right now listening to a rip of the vinyl probably isn't helping that. Song-wise, I would probably say I find track 12 or B5 the weakest in the mix. It just feels like we have better versions of the same song earlier on in the record. So by this point, it's just, just starting to feel a bit repetitive. These are very minor points though, driven mainly because I'm attempting to give some semi-objective commentary rather than that of a a gushing fan. But to be honest, gushing fan is how I feel most of the time on listening to this record. Track 3 or A3 is probably one of my favourites. It has what I like to call the secret agent groove, that in the main guitar riff, which immediately draws you in. And then your head is absolutely knocked for six when that huge baseball bat of a chorus slam in, slams in once again with that classic Jack White chicken plucking strumming attack. Uh, the track gives everyone some White Stripes nostalgia with the oh hooks and then it uses synth to provide the literal backup to that dial tone lyric which just works perfect and is such a good touch. Um, I really love track four's finger-picked opening melody that sounds both ominous but also kind of reminds me of Elliot Smith in a weird way. And the use of slide guitar here really breaks things up from just having the ferocious overdrive of the majority of the surrounding tracks. A late album highlight for me is track 11, which gives us a really cool delayed guitar groove that I instantly fell for. But then during its breakdown, there is a sick as all hell descending guitar riff, which is quality. Yeah, man, this album's killer. Uh, Jack White's still got it. He never didn't have it, in my opinion, and I've been happy to follow him down all of the experimental excursions till now. But this throwback, raw, rough and ready album is incredibly satisfying without ever feeling like it's too retro or too much of a pastiche. Uh, I'm going to give it an 8.2 and knock it on the head.
that's just what I think though. What are you lot saying? Let me know in the comments um, how you feel about it. Have you had the chance to hear it yet? Is this your first time knowing about it? Um, please do go hunt it out if that's the case. Um, check out the description below for lots of related reviews. And if you can be asked to do any of that, well, you may as well subscribe. Stick around, share some thoughts, show some love, or just tell some abuse in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, mate. Take care. Mine, there you go. Bye.